Greetings! Today we're going to talk about the Harbor Freight 20 pound sandblaster. This thing's actually pretty cool. I wouldn't have said that a couple months ago. But after learning how to use it, I'm actually a pretty big fan. It's a pretty, pretty sweet little device. So if you're like me, maybe you're thinking about buying or you, worse yet, you bought it, you brought it home and it sucked. And you got really angry and you're cussing and you're frustrating and your project was rusting, nothing was getting clean, this thing was getting clogged, you weren't having a good day, and life was not good. In my case, I tossed it in the back of the garage, I tried to give it away on Craigslist for free, nobody wanted it, so I stuck with it. So instead, I, I kind of changed my game and learned about it. And I want to share today what I learned, because it's actually a pretty effective cleaner. A couple quick tips. Um, it's it's not going to clean a whole car. You're not going to sandblast a 57 Chevy with it. But I want to talk about four areas. Um, air supply, uh, the abrasives you use, the, the setup of the machine itself, and also some technique and some other little tips so you can get onto your path of sandblasting success. Um, first thing, of course, air supply. You can see right there, 6 to 25 CFM. If you're like me, you know, you're, you're cheapskate, and you're thinking, okay, if I got six, I'm, I'm good. And that's not necessarily the case. This is my air compressor over here. As you can see, 6.2, 5.3. So it almost makes it, this air compressor, it's not the smallest air compressor in the world, but it's, it's not enough. It's, it, it doesn't hack it. It barely gets six. If you don't have six, you are not in the ballpark. Get, you're, just get off the field. You suck. Just go home. All right, it's not going to work. You need at least six. At six, this will work barely. It's going to clean kind of like a pencil eraser. It's not going to clean a lot. You can get some small projects done, but you're not going to get a whole car done, if that makes sense. What you really need is more CFMs. Again, this isn't enough. So what you can do, you know, maybe maybe go spend a thousand dollars on a big air compressor. What I did, I went on Craigslist, found a used one, and I hooked it up in tandem and basically doubled this. So now I'm at 12 and 10 CFM per minute. Another thing, you know, if you got a friend that's got an air compressor, go go borrow it from them for a while and, and just hook it in tandem. Use those 3 8 inch couplings just like that. It's it's easy. And then that'll hook right into your, your uh, line. But you need the CFMs. That's important. So the second thing to talk about is abrasive. Um, if you bought this at Harbor Freight, you're like me, you're a cheapskate, and you probably bought some playground sand, don't do it. All right, it doesn't work very well. Just go to get yourself some coal dust. It's it's not that much more expensive. In terms of frustration, it'll save you a lifetime of anger and just really not good times. Get the fine grain. Do not get medium grain. That'll clog these smaller tips, okay? Also, if you're struggling for CFMs, you, you don't want a larger tip. Just, just get the fine grain. You'll be fine for the projects that this thing can reasonably do. Okay? But don't get the playground sand. It's going to clog it. Never mind all the silicosis stuff. So the second thing, that, or third thing really, is the equipment setup. Use these 3 8 inch connectors. You know, get these at Harbor Freight. You're going to have a lot of quarter inch connectors sitting around spare ones afterwards like this one keep it around for later we're going to talk about that in a little bit of course get the 3 8 inch it gives you more airflow my setup of course I, I, i've got a moisture catcher right here the biggest thing with this that i had to pay attention to was down here of course air comes down through this pipe goes through here out this hose out the end this connector this of course, let's sand down. This has a tendency, this male piece right here, inserts too far into this T connector right here. And that can actually cut off the air supply that's running through here. And it occludes it, so the air pressure going through is very low. Make sure this is not inserted too far. This will kill you. Ways to fix it, insert more tape so it doesn't go down as far, or sand off the end of the male thread so it doesn't insert as far. Same thing here. Make sure this isn't poking up too far into this cross piece right here. The second thing that didn't work too well for me, which I switched, was the end of this tip. When it comes from the factory, 
it will have this 3 8 inch lever. It didn't work very well for me, my, or at least in my experience in, when I look at the other videos, people use this. When I turn this off, this entire hose has a tendency, at least in my case, to fill with sand, and then I'm frustrated. All right, so what I did, changed my technique. I just got rid of this, and then the ceramic tip here that was here, I just, I just put it straight on. It's the same threading. It's not a big deal, and use this. Now save this. We're gonna talk about this last. Um, but this is the only real change in this device. So then it gets to technique. I, I like to pull in the sandblaster pot pretty close to the project. Like, and this was something I was doing recently. It's all fiberglass now, but <clears throat> the whole point being, I'm gonna control it with these. I'm not using the nozzle, the controller here. The first thing I'm gonna do, of course, you know, hook in my line, get the air pressure Get the air coming through the pipe. So this air is going to be flying through here and coming out the nozzle. So you know the nozzle is not clogged. Second thing, pressurize the pot. Both of these are going to be on full blast. Then I'm going to go ahead and grab the nozzle and point it at whatever I'm doing. At the same time, with my other hand, I'm going to come down here and air is going. I'm going to start turning on this valve. I'm not going to turn it on all the way. I'm going to turn on slowly, and I'm going to be watching what's happening over here. And what you're going to notice is sand's going to start coming. It's going to start cutting. Once you got a good cutting rate, don't turn this on anymore. You don't necessarily need to turn this on to full blast. In my experience, when it goes to full blast, sometimes it works fine, but sometimes it starts oscillating too much sand through here, and it, it increases the chances of getting a clog. What you can do is if the sand is getting clogged, you can regulate the supply, you can kind of jiggle it back and forth or even shake the pot as it, as it starts to get empty as these smaller pots will. So that's a good way to control the air supply. As far as turning it off, it, it's the reverse. First thing to do while the air's on is turn off the sand, okay? Let the air run through for a couple seconds and clean out the entire hose. Once no sand is coming out, there's nothing to get clogged up. So then you can go ahead and turn off these two valves. All right, and then basically you're good to go. And, and, but the whole idea is you don't want this pipe to get filled with sand. Okay, so that's important. As far as reusing sand goes, I've had good experience just using, you know, basically a screen from a window, don't tell my wife, and just putting it in a bucket, and then you can just put it right back in there, and, and it does not clog. If you have the playground sand, or if you have the medium grit sand from here, these small tips are gonna clog and you're gonna get frustrated. What you wanna do instead, or what you can do, remember this from the beginning, you got this lever and you've got all these quarter inch tips from your previous hookups. You can rig this device, and this is a blower. I'm gonna keep this on all the time, but now I've got a quarter inch tip, okay? And you can pretty much blast anything through that. And what'll happen is over time, those tips will actually wear out. This is one I've been using. And you can see how it's almost gone, but it's just a quarter inch tip, so you can put a new one on and keep on rolling. The only disadvantage is this is gonna use a lot of air. It's gonna use a lot more than six, certainly, and it's gonna use a lot more than what I have, which is 10 to 12. So you really want the high CFMs if you're gonna be trying to play a trick like this. It works pretty well. So. In conclusion, this thing's great. It's fine. You're not going to do a whole car with it. Okay, a professional's going to laugh at it, but it actually does work if you pay attention to what we just talked about. I just did this dump cart here. It's not the biggest thing in the world. I'm starting to do fiberglass on it, so you don't really see metal. It's kind of ugly right now, but you know, something like that, that's it's fine for. So anyway, I wanted to share that with you before you throw this out in the trash can and congratulations there's something from harbor freight that actually works so you all have a good day thanks for watching